today on Rappler. I am faced with a choice. I can just kick the can down the road and let the next set of leaders deal with this problem. I prefer to pick up the can rather than kick it down the road. An SWS survey says the Aquino administration made radical progress in fighting corruption. There's a greater reason why you should pay the right taxes. What we're saying is that you pay your right taxes because you love your country. Tax Chief Anares tells businessmen, if you love your country, pay your taxes. And the Duchess of Cambridge wins the case against the French magazine that published her topless photos. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. A social weather station survey says the Aquino administration made radical progress in reforming the government. Fewer businessmen say they encountered a lot of corruption in government. Paterno S. Maquiel reports. Businessmen see less corruption in government and President Benigno Aquino boosts their confidence. A social weather station survey shows 42% of businessmen in 2012 report a lot of corruption in government, down from 64% in 2009. SWS President Mahar Mangaha says radical progress drives the government's anti-corruption campaign. To, make a, to uh, put the message in just one sentence, we are entitling this report as Quote, the fight against corruption has radically progressed since 2009. So in a nutshell, uh, the good news is in the public sector, and the, uh, I would say, disappointing news is in the private sector, which hasn't progressed as much as the public sector. The SWS notes the most radical change comes from the office of the president. In terms of net sincerity in fighting corruption, the SWS says Aquino gets an excellent grade at positive 81. An improvement from Gloria Arroyo's bad rating at negative 37 in 2009. In his keynote speech, Aquino says integrity in government has produced real, tangible economic results. He says improving the business climate is his administration's priority. We believe that the level playing field, in essence, a just society, built upon institutions that are fortified by the people's trust, is the foundation of sustainable growth. He says he will not do the politically prudent thing. I am faced with a choice. I can just kick the can down the road and let the next set of leaders deal with this problem. After all, the politically prudent thing to do would, not, would be to not rattle the cage, to not make any noise about it. I prefer to pick up the can rather than kick it down the road. But challenges remain especially for the private sector. Makati Business Club Chair Ramon Del Rosario Jr. says the challenge is immense, a culture that forces businessmen to play dirty if everyone else does. And what you're up against is this notion that if you are honest and your competitor is not honest, then you don't have a level playing field. And in those instances, some people think that honesty and integrity becomes a competitive disadvantage, which is a very sad uh, observation of, 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 of things. What he says corruption doesn't start and end with the government. It needs private citizens demanding integrity as well. Paterno S. Maquel, Rappler, Manila. Bureau of Internal Revenue Commissioner Kim Anares tells businessmen, if you love your country, pay your taxes. She says the country lags behind its neighbors because patriotism has not been strong in the Philippines. There's a greater reason why you should pay the right taxes. What we're saying is that you pay your right taxes because you love your country. We have all the natural resources in this country. How come we're, all, we're lagging behind? We're now, before we're number two from Japan, now we're number two from the bottom. On my own personal analysis, it's because we do not love our country. If you look at Japan, patriotism and nationalism is front and center. 
She says she believes that 90% of BIR personnel are honest, but there are still 9% who are susceptible to corruption and 1% who are, in her words, really hard-headed. Chief Justice Lourdes Sereno assures businessmen of judicial stability under her leadership. Speaking at the same Integrity Summit, Sereno says she will use her 18-year term to ensure that reforms will be institutionalized. This is to assure you that under my leadership, you will see 18 years of judicial stability. Perhaps it is, there is something to be said about having a Chief Justice sit for a long time to oversee an overhaul of the justice system that will be required in order to ensure that the reforms are deep, they will be institutionalized, they will be stable, they will be fast, and they will be addressed both systemic issues and they will be systematically implemented. The country's underemployment rate shoots up to a six-year high in July. Underemployment is a growth in the number of employed Filipinos looking for additional or higher paying work. The National Statistics Office says July's underemployment hikes up 22.7 percent. This was the highest since July 2006 when underemployment was at 23.4 percent. The NSO says a large percentage of the underemployed were working in the services sector at 42.5 percent and agriculture sector at 41 percent. The underemployed in the industry sector was at 16 percent. National Economic and Development Authority's Rosemary Adillon explains the increase in Filipinos looking for additional work was caused by the weather disturbances in July. Adillon says around 400,000 in the agricultural sector lost some form of income during the rainy season. There are 10 contenders for the post of Supreme Court Justice, three of whom tried for the position of Chief Justice. Cesar Villanueva, head of the Governance Commission for the GOCCs, or Government-Owned and Controlled Corporations, Securities and Exchange Commissioner Teresita Erbosa, and the LaSalle Law School Dean Jose Manuel Jocno. All are in the running for the seat vacated by Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno following her appointment in August. Other nominees for the post of Associate Justice are Government Peace Panel Head Marvin Leonen. He has just confirmed he is accepting the nomination. Retired trial court judge Adoración Cruz Avisado, Court of Appeals Justices Noel Tiham, Magdangal de Leon, and Isai Isaias Dikdikan. Former Energy Secretary Rafael Popolotilla and National Labor Relations Commission Joseph Gerard Mabilog have been recommended but did not confirm their nomination. The Judicial and Bar Council will now schedule the public interviews. Leonen, a former dean of the UP Law School before he became Peace Talks chief, accepted his nomination. President Benigno Aquino has 90 days to appoint a new Supreme Court justice. Senator Miriam Santiago will veto the confirmation of incoming Interior Secretary Mar Rojas on Wednesday because he did not attend her probe on resigned Undersecretary Rico Puno. Santiago says she has, quote, nothing personal against Rojas, whom she considers more than qualified in honesty, competence, and efficiency. But the senator says she will oppose the confirmation of any cabinet member who snubbed the hearing she initiated last Friday. Rojas and other cabinet members were no-shows at the hearing. Malacanang said Santiago should have followed proper procedure in her probe. Senator Franklin Drelon says the president can appoint Rojas on an ad interim basis before Congress adjourns to allow him to assume the post even without confirmation. Incoming Interior Secretary Rojas says he did not attend Friday's Senate hearing because he would have been useless there. Rojas says the invitation was for an assessment about the performance of Undersecretary Puno. Rojas says he had nothing to contribute. He says he was still with the Transportation Department during the time Robredo served as Cabinet Secretary. Rojas says Santiago has the right to use her veto powers. ABS-CBN reporter Sol Aragones is running for congresswoman of the 3rd District of Laguna. Aragones, who has been with the network for 13 years, will run under Vice President Jeje Marbina's United Nationalist Alliance. Aragones says residents asked her to run against incumbent Laguna representative Maria Evita Arago. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 4, 
the cast and crew of the anti-Muslim film Innocence of Muslims that outraged the Islamic world face a fatwa or religious edict from a cleric in Egypt. Salafis cleric Ahmad Fuad Ashush calls on Muslim youth in America to, quote, kill the director, producers, and actors of the film. Its release on jihadist internet forums sparked a week of furious protests outside U.S. embassies and other American symbols in more than 20 countries. At number seven, Apple says it received more than 2 million orders for its new iPhone 5 in 24 hours. It says many deliveries would be pushed back into October because of strong demand. The first customers in the United States and several other countries are expected to get the device September 21. But Apple says the rest will have to wait. At number eight. From hero to a villain, Peregrine Financial Group founder Russell Wassendorf Sr. pleads guilty to embezzling over 100 million U.S. dollars from 24,000 customers in the U.S. over a period of 20 years. Wassendorf, 64, was once regarded as a noble figure by university and healthcare donation recipients. He faces at least 24 years in jail for charges that include mail fraud and embezzlement. He attempted to commit suicide after writing a note confessing his fraud. And at number nine, Britain's Prince Harry was moved under guard to a secure location under the Taliban during the Taliban attack on Camp Bastion on September 14th. British Defense Minister Philip Hammond says the prince was never in danger. He was about two kilometers away with other Apache crew members when the heavily defended NATO base was attacked. Additional security r arrangements are in place to protect Britain's third in line to the throne. For the full top ten, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. A female suicide bomber kills 12 people in Kabul Tuesday in the deadliest single attack in retaliation for an insult by a U.S. film to Prophet Muhammad. Security officials say nine foreigners are among those killed when the bomber blew a station wagon on a major highway leading to Kabul airport. Hezbi Islami, the second largest insurgent group after the Taliban, claims responsibility for the attack. As violent protests over a U.S.-made film rocked the Muslim world, Salman Rushdie publishes his account of the decade he spent in hiding while under a fatwa or religious edict for his book, The Satanic Verses. With nearly 30 people killed in a week of violent protests over the film, Rushdie's memoir entitled Joseph Anton resonates. He says a book which was critical of Islam would, quote, be difficult to publish now. Rushdie adds, there's a lot of fear and nervousness around. Former British Prime Minister Tony Blair says violent protests over a film show some in the Arab world are still a generation from modernization. Blair, now a Middle East envoy, says it is wrong and offensive, but, quote, laughable as a piece of filmmaking. Blair says there's a struggle between forces of modernization and reactions that want to pull the Arab world backwards. A French court bans Closer magazine from any further publication or resale of topless photos of Prince William's wife, Catherine. The court also orders the magazine to hand over all files of the pictures to representatives of the royal couple within 24 hours. The royal couple also filed criminal charges against the magazine's editor and photographer. Every story on Rappler has its own mood meter with eight emotions for you to choose from. Click on how you feel and your vote will come to the mood navigator, which is on the front page of Rappler. The middle of the front page, you'll see 10 circles. There's 10 stories that have gotten the most number of votes. And the mood navigator crowdsources the emotion get, that gets the most number of votes, crowdsources the mood of the day. Today's stories, let's take a look. Uh, the Second Integrity Summit had three of the top stories today. 52% inspired, 30% happy. Um, the survey that came from it, SWS businessmen find government less corrupt, 90% happy. And again, interesting to note there that even though 48%, nearly 50% said they received bribe offers, and, and the survey itself said that uh, one, only one out of 10 actually reported, still it's a, a radical improvement. So 90% are happy, contributing to the mood of the day. Today, most people are happy. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Tuesday, September 18, 2012. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.